Welcome back to episode four of the Victory Coaches Show. My name is Coach Chris Haddad alongside Coach Danny Haddad as well. And getting right into it, we got plays of the week. But this episode is going to be a little bit differently. We're actually dedicating this episode to Coach Nick Saban, who just retired this past week, and Coach Bill Belichick, who is moving on from the New England Patriots. So this into the O Lab, where Coach Danny is going to talk to you about you know Nick Saban on his theory on why gap schemes are actually harder to defend. He's going to show you a gap scheme RPO that you can install into your offense. Let's check it out. To me, it's easier to play the RPO when the team runs zone play than it is when they run what I call a hat play, which is a lead play, or power or counter. Because now the linebackers are taught to step up and jump over or jump over because somebody pulled. All right, now you pull the ball and throw an RPO, you really just play. All right, so getting into it now, we're going to be going over just the basics of a second-level RPO and some different gap scheme RPOs that you can do. Just going to give you one example here. This is going to be out of a GH counter, and with this GH counter, we've modified it. Now, instead of where the guard is pulling, we're going to have the center pulling just because of the type of front that they're in. They're going to be in an over front. Instead of having that guard pull and having the center step down to a three-tech, you can take the guard, have him hinge out, and then have the center pull for the DN, and this H will pull through. So the way to think about second level RPOs and why gap schemes are so difficult, because you're getting pulls, right? Anytime you get a pull, you have linebackers trained all week that anytime you see a pull, I'm matching that pull, I'm scraping over the top because my gap is moved, so now I have to move with my gap. And with the gap scheme RPOs, it really stresses out the inside linebackers, and those are the ones you can really take advantage of. So every gap is taken care of, right? The C gap is taken care of, B gap, A gap is going to be pulling, and now we're going to be reading this inside linebacker. So we're going to be reading the first defender inside whichever receiver you want to have run the route. So since we want to have, we're going to be reading this mic here, and we have the H involved in the run scheme, we're going to be reading the mic, and then we're going to have this Y just go and run a simple glance route. It's going to be five steps inside. We're going to, your job is to get inside this outside linebacker, and the quarterback's only job is to read this mic here. So if he steps forward, you can then replace with the Y behind him. And if you end up staying back, that means we have numbers in the run fit. And even so, even if he does come up and you make a wrong decision, we're still fit up in the run scheme here just based on the defensive alignment because it is six on six here, so we are matched. But also, just in case we do, we can still read this extra hat and still have an extra man within the run scheme. So gap scheme RPOs are definitely tougher, just like Coach Saban just said, just because it puts so much stress within the linebackers and it really mixes up their rules. They're getting two different signals and two different looks from the offense. So now you're indecisive, which then one, opens up your run game, and then two, can really just mess with them and open up your pass game and cause explosive plays. Now we're going to transition over to our Blitz, Sim, and Stunt segment. And of course, we're dedicating this segment to Coach Belichick and Coach Saban's baby, Rip Liz, match cover three. All right, and the reason why Rip Liz match cover three was invented essentially by Coach Saban and Coach Belichick is because when you play cover three, a lot of times what teams will do is attack the seams, right? Because it puts so much stress on that single high safety. You know, For instance, the jack and the strong safety here, they have to respect the flats if they're spot dropping, all right? Well, if they're just dropping out and you have someone, as Coach Saban said, like Dan Marino, you can't spot drop because he can just slice and dice you with his natural arm talent. So what they invented was called match cover three, rip Liz match cover three, where the rules are the strong safety or outside backer is going to match number two if he goes vertical. So if he gets any form of vertical route, he's going to carry it the entire way. And this was a way that if they are going to attack the seams, you at least have a player to funnel it to the safety and to play it vertical, okay? So if you're playing with outside leverage, all right, you're going to funnel him to the safety. Now, what if number two goes out? If number two goes out, again, you're just playing it like you normally would and get to the flat and just play him out to the outside. Now, where the complications come from is when you get a fast three, meaning the running back here, one, two, and three to the left side. If you get him running out now into the flat and you get this vertical here, he's going to carry it just by his rules. He's going to take it the entire way. And then this Sam linebacker needs to push out as fast as he can to get to the outside. The corner is going to play what we call mod coverage, M-O-D. There's a million different names for it, man on demand, man only deep and so on and so forth. Meaning he's only going to play this man if he goes deep. If he does, he's going to run with it and play it like man-to-man coverage. If he does not, and let's say he goes under now or runs a hitch, 
he's then going to zone off it and play deep. Okay, so again, he's only playing his man deep. If not, he's going to zone out into coverage. Okay, but going back to that fast three, there's two ways you can play it. If you're telling him he's always taking this vertical, he can carry that no matter what. And then the Sam linebacker has to come out and play that fast three now. Okay, and he can't be late on it. Or the other variation which you can do is if he gets a fast three now, he then can lock onto it. And then he's going to make a push call telling the Sam, hey, you're pushing out to take that fast three. I'm going to take your guy and we're going to play it from there. So this push alert is typically made pre-snap. Hey, you got a fast three coming. Just be alert for that fast three and I'll take your guy coming through. That's all that push alert means between the Sam and the strong safety here. But again, this push alert and carrying number two vertical helped protect the Browns during that season. And of course, pretty much every team that plays cover three now will play some sort of match variation of it, but it helps protect your teams because now offense is all running a lot more option routes where they're just sitting in vacated zones. Here, this match cover protects you where your players are actually covering people, not covering just grass on the field. Okay, the next segment we're going to jump into is what we're calling Tech Time, and we're actually going to look at Coach Saban's cornerback drills where he teaches his corners how to not cross over their feet when they're playing man coverage. And this is a good drill that you can implement into your practices as well. Let's check it out. All right, so what you're seeing here is just a simple cornerback press drill where you can see the wide receiver is going to be working side to side, and you can hear Coach Saban yelling at his players to make sure they're trying to press up field. It's not just working side to side, but you're trying to make this guy work running side to side. And again, we're just focusing on our feet, keeping our shoulders square, and then we're working on our punch. When you punch, you don't want to get too extended on your toes because then you'll be off balance. The wide receiver will wash you, and he's going to be out the gate. So this drill really just focuses on going side to side, keeping balance 50-50 on each leg as we're moving. Good hard press jam at the line of scrimmage, and then the next guy will jump in. You get plenty of reps out of this going back and forth, but four to five times. So I really like this drill from Coach Saban. Again, this is just a cornerback press drill that can help you out. Yeah, and it's good just to maintain your your body position with your punching too, just to make sure you're staying within the frame of your body and not reaching too, too far out, which is nice. So keep your feet moving, get a good punch within the frame of your body. Overall, great drill. You get a ton of reps, like you just said. All right, the next segment is our last segment, which is things found around X. Now, this first clip here, I had to put it in there because it's one of the few times we actually see Coach Bill, Bill Belichick smile on the field, at least. They're playing the New York Jets, and they're trying to punt. I believe they're on right around the 40-ish yard line and too far for a field goal, and they want to punt it. So what they do is they take a delay of game. Well, they take a delay of game, and Adam Gase, the head coach of the Jets, declines it. Well, because he declines it, Coach Belichick tells his players, wait until the one second and then take a false start. So he does that, and then what happens is another 40 seconds runs off. So he just wasted all of that time by taking two offensive penalties without getting a 15-yard penalty, which ultimately Coach Gaze declined again, and they had to punt it from that spot. They couldn't move further back. But again, this is one of the few times we saw Coach Belichick smile on the field, and you could tell that he was really trying to stick it to him. But I thought this was – they've since closed this loophole in the rule, which I read recently. So this obviously you can no longer do, but I thought it was a good tactical way to run off some clock, which I believe later in that season too, Coach Vrabel ended up using it against the Patriots. So Coach Belichick used it, and then Karma came back around. He ended up getting used against him. It's always the little things that make him laugh. Little things about football that make him smile. So right, it was right. kind of cool to see Vrabel use that against him too, just coming from the Patriots and just kind of using all of his techniques that he's taught him over the years. So right. it was cool. Cool to see that. Yeah. All right, this next clip that we have is this Coach Belichick playing with emotion too, which you know I think a lot of times people are, are so stuck in that do-your-job realm. And it's come out that the Patriots players don't have fun, right? And that was the big laughing stock when they were winning Super Bowls. But I always love this clip because he's talking about playing with emotion, how hard you work during the week to play with emotion. Dan, what are your thoughts on this as far as you know getting kids excited during the season, especially all that work they put in? Because we only have, you know, in high school we only have 11 games. NFL, you only have 17 games that you're guaranteed at least. So I really thought this spoke volumes to all levels on playing with emotion. Right, yeah, especially just obviously being a high school coach. You train 12 months out of the year for 11 games. So like doing some math I'd done in the off season, you spend 96% of your time preparing. So you spend 96% of your time preparing and then you get to enjoy that 4%. So obviously all that work you put into that 4%, enjoy it, make it fun, right? It, and that you have to make the preparation fun as well. So if you're not enjoying the time you're doing this, you're not going to get the full 
effect from this game that it has. It's so much fun. It can be so much fun. But really, if you're just so focused and honed in on just not having fun and being miserable while you're playing and just too focused to have fun, then you got to lighten up a little bit more and just make sure you really truly enjoy the game. And that's coming from Bill Belichick, who taking time off the clock is the only thing that has made him smile. So like, you got to make sure that if he's telling you this, to do this and to make sure that you're getting the full effect from this game, to really enjoy the process, then yeah, that's what you got to do, right? You got to make sure this game, in, in the end, is still a game, right? Make it fun. Make sure you're enjoying it. And that's all we have for this episode here. Make sure you check out this episode right here. That way you can see all of the ones we've done in the past. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.